I think um, he's really convinced I won't speak out. I think so. I think so. I think he really feels that he, he finished the job. She's never going to talk. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I'm very sure this is going to be a shocker to him mm -hmm. when this airs. Because of uh, allegations, heavy allegations, mm -hmm. that your ex-husband mm -hmm. uh, made. Before I talk about the issues, where were you when you heard these things? Um, it was early in the morning. Yeah. Um, I'd just woken up and mm -hmm. I saw um, a message from my sister, you know, and it was uh, like, just be calm, he's at it again. You know, mm -hmm. and then going into the, the message and seeing the same thing that has been going on for the past 10 years. And um, I just like, this is it, I've had enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I need to um, put an end to this, right. you know, because I feel like I kind of ran out of an abusive relationship, but I'm still under abuse mm -hmm. for the past 10 years because I've tried to move on with my life. I've mm -hmm. tried to build my life from scratch, you know, but this person just keeps going to the media space to bash, you know, defame me and cook up lies and just say things that never existed or, you know, something that he, he has built up on, you know. So um, I just decided it's time to speak up. This is the first time that you're ever speaking up on this issue yes, in the media, is. isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. What we remember from this marriage as, a, as the public is, mm. and then in 2016 or 2017, we know that Emeka AK was in court with you, yes. begging you yes. not to go. Yes. Yeah, the news that we heard was that he knelt down in court and begged you, <laughs> and his friends knelt down in court and begged you. No, that never happened. That never happened? Yes, that never happened. In court, he would always say that um, he would do the right thing. Mm -hmm. He would come to my family, mm -hmm. you know, we would discuss and everything. And, you know, they would, they would tell us to go back mm -hmm. and do that. And they would adjourn the case. The next adjourn date, we come back, they ask me, did he come to you? I would say no, because mm -hmm. that never happened. Right. You understand? In fact, if I may say, in court, he had actually told me and said, who wants you back? And I had pointed out to the judge, and the judge had said that he heard him. You know, so it was all a facade, you right. know, because he just wanted to look good and to stretch the, the, uh, the court proceedings more than it should have been done. He, there was never any day. His friends did reach out, you understand, but they were not in court. Nobody knelt down in court to beg me. So you say that you survived an abusive marriage, yes. you know? Yeah. What do you mean exactly by that? Okay, so... What was the abuse? Um, it started off as verbal. Right. It started off as mental torture. It started off as, as psychological. It started off as financial, you know, mm -hmm. uh, financial abuse because mm -hmm. I was not allowed to work. You he didn't allow you to he work? He didn't allow me to work. Actually, I wanted to be an actress. That's why I became his friend. I was modeling at that time. I just come out of secondary school. I was 18. Yeah. And then I met him along the line, and I wanted to be you know, someone who would put me into the industry and all that. And he categorically told me that I couldn't um, act because it would destroy our relationship. Because at that time, we had gotten into an, a relationship. you know. And he said he was planning to marry me. and you know, the tabloids, then it was newspapers. So they would talk about him, talk about me, and it would break the, 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 the relationship and or the marriage, you know. And so he told you not to become an actor yes, because of the yes, relationship? Yes, yes, he did say that. He even stopped my modeling career. In fact, I had been approached by an agency to, to, to be sponsored for Miss Nigeria at that time. That was, this was 1999. He also refused. He said he couldn't handle uh, me crying if I don't win, you know, things like that. And I had to go back to the agency to say my parents, my family didn't want me to do it. And then I went to my family and said the agency dropped me. Mm -hmm. That was because I didn't know what to, to say to them because mm -hmm. he was saying, no, that I won't do it. You met him when you were 18. Yes. You got married when you were 19. No, we didn't get married till I was, um, I think, 23. Going on 24, right. I was already pregnant with our second child right. when, when we got married. In fact, I had to be the one to speak out, like, you need to do something because this is our second child. So I was already heavy, and um, I regret it. 
Why? Yeah, because um, even during the wedding, he came late from the state he was shooting at that time. They never blessed us. It was his older sister's husband who was stood in and you know, the wine changing and blessings and all that was done. All through when we had collected the list from my uncle and given to him, and we were preparing on our side, and I was always calling him, oh, are you, you know, in tune with your family on the list to get everything? His family came empty handed. They didn't bring anything. In, even his family would always laugh at me at my back and say I married myself. Wow. You know, it was always a case of, oh, she wants to marry a star and she has to work for it. And I did, I slaved for that family. Everything that they wanted to do, I was a designated driver. Everything that they wanted to do, I was the one who was always doing things for them. I was doing it on my side because of love, because this was my family. Mm -hmm. As long as you know you are my friend or you, you are my husband's people, you are my family, because mm -hmm. my mom was a single parent, mm -hmm. you understand. I come from a very humble background, you know, but not that humble, mm -hmm. you understand, because my mom strived, she worked hard to take care of her kids, but she protected us. Mm -hmm. And she brought us in this very close-knit, very loving home mm -hmm. that, you know, we grew up in. And so I always thought like every family is like that. You understand? So the question is, somebody would wonder about is, why, why did you go ahead with the wedding despite all that disrespect? You know, him waiting for about five years, mm -hmm. instead of relationship, mm -hmm. his family not paying the bride price, him coming late, Obviously, there were signs. Why did you go ahead? I didn't see the signs as signs. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't start... In hindsight, I wouldn't even date him. You understand? Mm -hmm. But then at that time, he was my first everything, first boyfriend. I just came out of secondary school. Mm -hmm. I just came out of not knowing, you know, anything. I think it was when I got to be 24 that I started understanding that this is not right. This mm -hmm. is not how I should be treated. You know, I, I now started seeing that, um, you know, I, I wouldn't accept some things, you know, that kind of thing. And that's why I said I regretted, you right. know, even doing going that. Yeah. And it was until I was 28, 29, going into my 30s, I started fighting back. Right. And then it now escalated from, you know, um, verbal and all that, and then became physical. Right. You understand? And then still, even with that, people will say, oh, you know, it's a man's world, and you would, I, I, I didn't think of myself, mm -hmm. you know, but until the last time that he did beat me up and I was almost paralyzed, that was when I decided that I need to go. But still, I stayed two more years after that, you know, but... He beat you until you were almost paralyzed. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I, we had gone out with the kids and we came back and um, I was changing my daughter and he saw you know, her nappy rash and it was a bad nappy rash and he was all over the place angry and all that that she'd been molested. And I said, how? This is nappy rash and he was going on and shouting, who did I give his daughter to this and that? And I should, they, need to be, they need to check her and everything. And I tried to calm him down that this is nappy rash. I use Vaseline instead of powder. That's why it's so red, you know, that kind of thing. And he was going on and on. And I was like, okay. And at that point, I was getting upset, you know, like, you can't be doing this. And then he, he, I was like, okay, give me money. Let me take her to the hospital and let's get her checked. And then he hit me, you know. And at that point, I had like, you know, like, you can't keep beating me up, you know. And I held his hand. And so he just turned me over and hit me, and then he hit me at the back of my neck here, and that was it. I lost sensation to all my body, my body parts. I went down on the floor. I couldn't feel my arms. I couldn't feel anything, and he kept hitting me. He kept hitting me and hitting me, and I was shouting, Emeka, if you hit me one more time, I would die. I can't feel anything. I was only seeing the stars. So when he hits me, it goes poof. You know, that kind of thing. And that was only what I was seeing. I could talk, I could hear, I could see, but I couldn't feel. This was in front of our kids. This was in front of his, his PA at that time, Debola. And I was, you know, trying to move my body. My body wasn't moving, you know. So when he realized himself, he got up, he walked out of the house. 
and I was there for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, I don't know. I was still trying to move, trying to move, trying to move my body. And then I felt this sensation all over, like a million pins, you know, poking me, pricking me and everything. And I think the nails were beginning to connect or something, you know. And then I got up. And that was when I saw the boy, Debola, peeping from the door. I guess he had told the boy to come and check if I died. You know, that kind of thing. And then I spoke the boy's name. I said, Debola. And the boy ran out. I think he didn't want to come close so that they don't say he's the one that killed me or something. Mm. And then I heard his car drive off. And I take my children and I ran to a friend's house. He's denying it, but I always, there are people that I run to their houses every time he beats me up. People that I run to their houses in the middle of the night. People that I run to their houses and I collapse. All this happened and they are living witnesses. I have pictures. I presented those pictures during the divorce. I still have those pictures, but I'll only give my evidences in court. Right, so, so he, wow. The lawyers had advised that it is a, a high court, because this was um, customary court, because we were only married traditionally. Mm -hmm. It was only that traditional marriage that we had. Mm -hmm. We never did the uh, you know, formal one of going mm -hmm. to the registry, because mm -hmm. he always has one woman out there who wants to give him American papers, or who wants to give him this paper and that paper. But I never consented to it, because I would always say, you go there and you marry these women for papers in front of God and the minister. You're not saying this is fake, this is for paper. So he keeps the children away from you yes. as some kind of punishment after the divorce. Yes. And then tells them that you have abandoned them. Yes, yes. When I reconciled with them, I didn't want to come out and say, oh, I'm here to get you. You know, I'm your mom and this and that. I have custody of you because I was awarded sole custody of the children. Mm. Well, I had to build my relationship back with them and let mm. them, you know, know me again. My daughter didn't recognize me. She thought the other lady was her mom because she was two when she was taken away from me. When I had left, I had left with my two younger kids because I felt they still needed me. You said this marriage was abusive almost from the get go. So you mentioned it was financial abuse, it was verbal abuse, it was emotional abuse. Yes. What do you mean by verbal and emotional abuse? Um, you know, insults, mm -hmm. putting you down every time. So you had a terrible temper. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I got out and I was in a friend's car, I didn't know I used to sit like this. And that was because of the, the lashing. I jumped out of a moving vehicle before. I've attempted suicide three times. Because of your husband? Yes. He's not saying all these things. The pastors, they send pastors, the church will send pastors to our house. And he's out there, I'm in the bathroom, I want to slit my wrist, I bought a pack of blade, and him and the pastors are out there banging down my door, banging down the bathroom door, you understand? Because it, it, was, it was, you know, somehow I preferred physical. I preferred him to beat me than to say things to me. So the words he was saying to you were so horrible yes, that you wanted yes, to take your yes, own life? Yes, yes. He would describe you in like you are an imbecile. He would describe you like you are not worth anything. And what did the physical violence start? That started, um, like I said, when I started fighting back. Because, and, and I think he did feel that I was going wings and I needed to be, you know, clamped down. So that was when it started. There was a time we went to the hospital, my child was sick and I was, we didn't have money. You know, and I was trying to negotiate with the hospital if we could, they could you know, treat the child and we'll pay later. And mm -hmm. it was taking a little bit of time, you mm -hmm. know, and he just came in and was yelling at me. You're a fool. You don't know how to do things. What? All these, these people, you can't even talk to them. Who are they? They are beneath you and you're, you're allowing them to do this and all that. And I got upset and I was like, why are you being a jerk? Mm -hmm. You know, and excuse my language. And I went off into the car to sit down and... <laughs> Immediately he was coming into the car, his punch was the first thing that I was seeing on my jaw. Right in front of people in the car, in the car park, you know. You know, so things like that, you dare not speak back. You dare not look him in the eye and talk when he's at it. It was always, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that. You ha I made you. You made me. I was 18. I was pregnant with two of your kids when I got into the, into the university. Mm. 
yeah, I, I'm grateful for that. You understand, but I did. I that didn't mean that I have to be under you. Mm -hmm. I needed to be somebody of my own. Mm -hmm. I needed to have my own path in life. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't accept anything. Right. He wouldn't accept anything. The house he said he's claiming that he built for my mom. He didn't build her any house. My mom's house was built in the 70s. How old was he in the 70s? Mm -hmm. She was renovating, and she was doing the back. You know, and as a son-in-law, yes, he did give her. A gift, you understand, which we're grateful for, you understand. But he never built a house for her. He mm. keeps blowing things out of proportion, you understand. Mm. And then the school he's claiming mm -hmm. about, <laughs> I mean, we didn't spend that much money. So you spent 450 million now went down the drain. That's the new amount now. It used to be 100 million. Now it's 480 million. The school didn't cost us that much. Mm -hmm. We were still owing the owner of the house. We had leased the building for 10 years because it wasn't really completed. And we're going to complete it and you know do other things and then make it suitable for a school and all that. But mm -hmm. we didn't even complete the, the, the building, you mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. So the, you know, we wouldn't have spent about 30 million, 20 million, you know. But for publicity's sake, you know, at first he was claiming it was 100 million. And now I don't know where 480 million is coming from. Is it perhaps that it was paid in dollars and so it's in the exchange rate? <laughs> no. No, it okay. Wasn't, it wasn't. So the school thing, so he says that you took his school. Let's, now, let's take the mm. allegations one after okay. the other. Okay. He says you took the school from mm. him. Is mm. that true? I left in the middle of the term. Right. I left in October. Mm. The school ran till, till full term okay. and they were dispersed. I don't know. I was not in the picture. So you don't know what happened to this school? I don't school. know what happened. I only mm -hmm. found out that he didn't resume the school in January. Mm -hmm. And he had moved with the children to, to, to Abuja. Right. So I never knew. Okay. Uh, I, I, about this even, yeah, I don't know. Then he says that he went to the UK, to the US, with a luggage. <laughs> and by the time he came, you had swept everything clean from him. OK. <laughs> so um, at that time, we didn't have money. Okay. The landlord had kicked us out of the house. The time we were given had come to an end. So we decided to move some things to the school compound because we still had space, you know, we were still building, it was not filled with children and all that, so we had space. So I moved some things into, that, uh, into the school compound mm -hmm. and I was living with his mom. I was sleeping on the floor with my kids in his mom's small apartment. You understand? So mm -hmm. I'll come from Isola to Magodo every day to, to, to run the school. So that's where the move, the move right. is coming from. Right. You understand? Right. But at that time, I had planned to leave. Okay. So he traveled. But he was within Nigeria, he traveled to. Okay. So when, he, I, when I was moving, I selected my things and kept them aside with my two younger children. Right. You understand? Yeah. So. When he landed and he called me to tell me he had landed, and I said, I've moved out. Mm -hmm. And he said, is that what you want? I said, yes. He said, let's keep it quiet. I don't want anything in the media. I don't want to you know anything. And I said, OK, no problem. And I've been keeping quiet for 10 years. He has been the one doing all the talking right now. Yeah. You know. He says that you assaulted his mother. Yes. Is, is that true? No. That's, what happened? That's quite the opposite. Okay. So I just gave him to our last child, mm -hmm. and his mom, you know, was coming to help out. And his mom will come Monday to Friday. She leaves on Friday that she must go to church. She must mm -hmm. attend her church. Mm -hmm. So my mom comes Friday to Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom will leave in the morning on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. There was this one day his mom accosted my mom as my mom. You know, we're all out there in, you know, talking and laughing and all that. My mom then picked her bag and said she was leaving. And by the time she got into the middle of the compound, his mom jacked my mom's clothes and was shouting and saying, my mom has stolen her son's money again. My mom should give her her money. She needs her money. She wants to do things. She don't, can't do anything. And my mom is here stealing her son's money. And she tore my mom's clothes. And my mom was naked. And my mom was like, can you find your son's money on me? My mom emptied her bags and everything and you know, trying to say that, I don't have any money on me. Which money have I stolen? You understand? And I got upset and I told her, Mommy, I am tired. I am tired. You can have your son back. And I picked my kids and I left. 
The next day, he called the pastor, he called me, we came back, and his sister was there, and you know, ranting, she would have beat up my mom, if my mom was still around, that my mom beat up her mother. And I was like, I don't understand. And she said, yes, that that's what they are saying. And I was like, no, that never happened, you know. And his mom, after everything, had told me that Emeka was the one propelling the beating part, that she never told anyone anybody ever beat her. So Emeka's mother yes. said she never told she anybody She said she never that said anybody beat her, that he, my husband, was the one that was propelling it, that she was beaten up. What you're describing is a deeply toxic yes. Yes. situation. This is what I lived. This is what I lived 14 years of my life. Now, there's also the other allegation of his properties that you <laughs> essentially have <laughs> taken away. He kids, my two children and their clothes. That was the only thing I took. I'm not in possession of his properties. Well, I did know their locations and all that. But how would you sell somebody's property if you don't have the papers or documents? So you don't have any land documents I don't have anything. He's the one who I have heard has been selling off his properties. Mm. You know, we couldn't even finish our, our buildings and all that because of his drug use. We couldn't make things out of life. We couldn't do anything with, you know, we couldn't plan. We couldn't go ahead with our plans because of his drug use. So he had a drug problem? Yes. When you say drug, what do you mean by drug? Well, I didn't know he was taking drugs. Right. It was when my kids came back, they told me their dad takes drugs. What kinds of drugs? Meds, whatever. They said they found his paraphernalia, you know. And that made me realize why. Why money would finish. Why we would plan and say, okay, this money is coming in. We need to do this. We're going to do this. And all of a sudden, money is gone. You just described him as a drug addict, essentially. Yes. Do you think the drugs that you've alleged contributed to this entire lack of peace? Yes, he might have. I'm not a medical person, but mm. I think he might have. Mm. Even when I found out that he used to smoke marijuana, I kicked against it. What he said is what makes him sane. He said it's what uh, calms him down. You know, and he tried to make me understand that it's medicinal, it's, um, you know, it's okay, and, you know, he needs it. You know, but I, I don't know. What made you keep coming back? This is a man who, you've described that he beats you in front of your children. Mm -hmm. He beats you in the car park in front of the hospital people. Mm -hmm. He called you stupid and dumb. You know, his sister and his brother had attacked you. What made you keep coming back to that marriage? I don't know. I don't know. Because, um, how do I put it? In hindsight, I think it's grooming. Mm. It's grooming. And he was threatening to kill me. This man almost poured hot cooking oil on me at a time. He, he would carry knife and he would be walking up and down the house. I'll just kill you and nobody will know. Nobody will find out. I'll just finish you off. And the day he carried the hot oil, if I did not howl, mm. I had to howl and clap my hands. And then he dropped the hot oil and he walked out and he was still even bragging and everything. And I was on the phone with my sister crying and you know, he just poured hot oil on me. And my sister was like, no, he's only bragging. He's only trying to, he won't do it. That was all I kept hearing. Speaking about friends, he said that some people were blackmailing you. <laughs> that's why you broke up with him or that's why you had the divorce. I don't know anybody. I don't know any such. If he claims I took his properties, go to court. When my mother died, he arrested me. My mother was two weeks in the mortuary. I was in SAS, Ikeja, Area F, I be Area H. No, when, after well, I had left, right. you understand. He said I absconded with his children and everything. It was the, the boss of the police who had told me that he can always arrest you. He can harass you because he's still your husband. If you don't want him anymore, you need to divorce him. So immediately I came back from my, my mom's burial. Then I, I went ahead with the, because he was arresting my friends. He was making sure that people run away from me. I lost people. People were scared. Oh, people didn't, you know, didn't want to, yes. Nobody buried my mother with me, no friend. There was because only two scared people everybody because away. he scared everybody away. I buried my mom alone and I'm her last born. My two sisters couldn't come from wherever they were, but because of this man, 
you know, I didn't have the backing that I needed, the support yeah. that I needed, you understand. So, you know, it's... What, what you're describing, though, is a... Because you, used, you talked about teaching your children mm -hmm. about the psychopath and the sociopath. Mm -hmm. If you are correct in everything you've just described about the actor Emeka Ike, your ex-husband, mm -hmm. you were dealing with a sociopath because... Yes, I was. There was a day that he had finished beating me and I was on the floor looking at him and then he was walking away. He came back and he was like, it's not me, it's you making me do it. And then he, he rang a bell because I like to watch um, Crime Channel, which <laughs> yeah, they don't accuse me of wanting to kill him. So I'm looking for the best possible, <laughs> possible means. <laughs> But it was a police walk, you know. I would always say, oh, if I was abroad, I, I would do police work. I like the police work. Mm -hmm. You know, I like cold cases where they really dig and, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. But something that struck me when mm -hmm. he had said, it's not me, it's you. Mm -hmm. You know, that denial, that putting the blame on the victim and all that. And I quickly Googled, you know, psychopath. But sociopath was the first. And they had 10, 10 characteristics and all 10 described this person. Mm. All ten, and I called my sister and said, "Look at what I found. Look at this. Look, this is what I'm facing. This is actually what is going on." My sister was like, ah, "Let me too. I am one now. You know how family will always try to water down whatever you're trying to bring up." And it wasn't until after I left and he had said something and done something, and my sister was like, "Emma, I see it now. Mm. You were right." Yeah. As you've said, it fits the profile of a sociopath, and it makes sense. Why would he say all these things on live television when you have evidence, when there are people who were witnessing it, yes. when there are friends, family yes. Yes. that can confirm it? Yes. I think um, he's really convinced I won't speak out. I think so. I think so. I think he really feels that he, he finished the job. She's never going to talk. Mm. I think so. Mm. Yeah, and I, I'm very sure this is going to be a shocker to him yeah. when this airs, I think so. In fact, I'm expecting him to sue me because I don't expect him to really stop, mm. you know, but I, I would rather we go legal, mm. you know, mm. that that's the way I do things. Let's, you know, just iron things out, you know. I'm here because he dragged me here. He's been dragging me here for the past 10 years, mm. you understand? Mm. and. And initially, I would see people fighting for me. Oh, this man, you're the only one talking. This man is not even saying anything, you know. But right now, he's only, his narrative is the only one out there. Mm -hmm. And it's becoming the truth. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I needed to, to speak out, mm -hmm. you know, for posterity's sake. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yes. What I've been through is something I would never wish my enemy. It's something that I would never wish the devil himself. 